Hi, in this video, what we're going to be doing is talking about the concept of a full set swap. Um, and also, before we get into that, we're just going to cover some of the well, standard practices when it comes to uh, changing over cartridges so that you've got some idea of, of, of where habits have been formed so that we can help break them for full set swapping. So first I'm going to deal with your, your habits when it comes to when to change out an ink tank, which is basically what a PFI 300 like we have here is. Um, an ink tank is basically a, a reservoir of ink that you swap into your printer. The print head is separate. Um, so you take your ink tank and you change it over as and when required. Now, normal practice, be it with um, an original inkjet cartridge or a compatible one, is that those things are single use and you want to get as much ink out of them as possible before you have to change each one over. So as a result, what you do is you wait for your printer to show up with cartridge empty. And at that point, usually it's just one cartridge. You change that cartridge out, put a brand new one in, and then the printer does what's known as a priming routine to get everything ready. Now, um, obviously, none of your cartridges will ever finish all together. You'll never get a full set of cartridges turn around and go, hey, we're all empty, we want to go as a gang. No, you'll have the yellow will go sooner or the, the, the matte black or whatever it'll be, but there will be one cartridge that finishes sooner and then a different cartridge will crop up and et cetera, et cetera. Now, the reason this is important is it means that um, each time you change a cartridge over, your printer will do what's known as a priming routine. Now that priming routine pulls ink from the cartridge to um, clear the channel of any bubbles and potential cloggage um, and leave that printer ready to print. The problem is it doesn't just do it on the cartridge you changed, it does it on all of them. So if you change one cartridge in a set of 10, which is what we have with our Pro 300 here, um, it will draw ink and waste it um, for all 10. Now that waste ink has to go into the waste pads in the printer and there is a finite capacity for that as well. So not only are when you, you know each time you change that cartridge out, are you actually wasting additional ink, but you're also wasting some of that actual capacity and the lifespan of your printer at the same time. Okay, so that's established procedure. Now, when it comes to refilling cartridges, and I'm guilty of this myself, um, normally the same thing happens. Um, particularly with printers where you have the ability to reset a, a cartridge or you have an auto reset chip, what happens is individual cartridges show up as, as needing um, to be uh, changed. And even if you're refilling, um, what you do is you take that cartridge out, top it up, and then you pop it back in and the print head goes through its pr priming routine for all of the other ones. So you're still wasting just as much ink. The thing with refilling is that unlike your um, OEM cartridges um, or your compatible single use cartridges, it, you don't need to use all of the ink right now. Okay, with a refilled cartridge or refillable cartridge, what's happening is you can take your cartridges out whenever you want and top them up. Because if you take a cartridge out and it's half full, you don't take that cartridge out, dump that ink out of the refillable cartridge and then refill the thing from fresh that would be nuts. All you do is top it up. So that half filled bit of ink, you know, the 50% of ink that wasn't used before will get used in the future. It's not wasted. Okay. So what this does is it opens you up to the idea of instead of changing out just one cartridge, whenever that particular one reaches empty, but take the whole lot out, put in another set and then refill all of your cartridges or top all those cartridges up um, so that you're only ever doing one full set of cartridges whenever one of them reaches empty. And just to expand on that a little bit, what I mean is you have a second set of cartridges that is ready, that has been topped up, is refilled and ready to go. And when one of your cartridges that's in the printer says I'm, I'm empty or needs to be um, replaced, what you're doing is taking all of that set of cartridges out of your printer and you're replacing them with your full ready to go set. So your printer, assuming you have a chip resetter or, or something along those lines, what happens is your printer will go through one entire volume of, of your most used cartridge before you swap everything out. So it runs one cleaning routine instead of 10 priming routines 
which potentially wastes one or two mil of ink across all of them, okay? So the idea of a full set swap is it reduces the amount of waste goes into the waste pads and also the amount of ink that you're wasting from all of your cartridges. I have mentioned earlier um, the idea of auto reset chips and chip resetters. Now auto reset chips, unless they can be reset manually, um, won't work with a full set swap. So you can discount them straight away. Chip resetters like a red setter here um, will work fine so long as your cartridges are actually compatible with a, a red setter unit. So if you're talking about a Canon Pro 10, which is the predecessor to this Pro 300, um, the PGI 72 does have a chip resetter. What that allows you to do is when you take your cartridges out to refill them, um, you can reset the chip so that the cartridge will read as being full when it goes back into the printer. Yeah. So what that means is for like Pro 10, as I mentioned earlier, um, you have a set of cartridges that you have reset so that they're all showing as full and you've refilled them so that they are actually physically full. And then when you put those, print, those cartridges into the printer to replace your other set, what will happen is your ink monitoring will still retain the ability to tell you when one of those cartridges or the first of those cartridges reaches empty. So it will tell you when, uh, when to do your full set swap um, without you having to worry about it. Where that changes is when you're dealing with a printer like the Pro 300, where there is no reset capability or compatibility available. There is no resetter or red setter available for that particular chip, okay? Um, and just to note, it's very unlikely there ever will be. Um, it might happen, but for the moment, we're assuming it won't. It's been nearly well, two years plus, and there still hasn't been anything come on the market. And our discussion with the developers of Red Setter have indicated it's not economically viable for them to actually work out and, and make it happen. Okay, so we're going to assume you have no chip resetter available to you. So what can you do? Should you just abandon refilling altogether? Certainly from some people have, have suggested that that's the only um, way forward which is kind of well it, it, it's not ideal for people whose budget does just doesn't stretch that because um, a set of cartridges for this particular printer right now is somewhere in the region of 160 pounds plus closer to 200 I believe at the moment and it's only going to get worse with current economic conditions so refilling is still quite a um, an attractive option if you can make it work which is where full set swap comes in. Instead of having a chip resetter, what you actually have is good old pen and paper or a spreadsheet if you're um, of that particular mind and your set of digital scales that come with your refill kit. What you do is instead of relying on a red setter and ink monitoring is you record the amount of printing you're doing so how many prints you're doing, the size of those prints, is it A4, A3, letter, um, or similar, um, the type of subject for your printing. So are you doing lots of blue seascapes? So they're gonna use more cyan. Are you doing lots of sunsets or lots of reds that uses up more magenta? Are you doing lots of sun stuff? So yellow, potentially magenta again. So you've got a log that helps you identify if your printing is perhaps using more of a particular color, which will all be useful for you later on. And the other critical piece of information that you actually record is the weights, the weights of your cartridges. So what you do is you weigh your cartridges before they go into the printer, and you weigh your cartridges whenever you do a full set swap so that you can see how much weight has reduced and from that work out how much ink has been used. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a concrete example of how we've used that log so far. And this is just our initial testing. Um, what we did was print off somewhere between 25 and 30 targets, um, profile targets for custom profiling, okay? So they are all A4, 25 of them. We've done no, uh, sorry, we did one print head cleaning routine as well and we then did a full set swap where the cartridges were all taken out um, and weighed. Now, I'll be honest, we didn't actually weigh the individual cartridges before we put them in. 
but I know that the cartridge weight was anywhere between 32 and 33.3 grams in terms of weight, okay? So keeping that in mind, we then weighed them when we took them out after doing our 25 to 30 prints. And the lowest weight for any of those cartridges was our 72 chroma optimizer, and that had 27 grams of ink left. So assuming a worst case scenario that that particular one was 33 point whatever it was grams, um, we've used somewhere between five and six grams of ink for those prints that we've done there. Okay, so by that calculation, we should have been able to do the same kind of printing times more without actually emptying those cartridges. Now this is just a guide. We haven't done any print head cleaning beyond that. Um, the print cart, sorry, the cartridges haven't been in the printer for much more than about a um, month. And um, in terms of cartridge primary routines, there wasn't any others because there was just that one when the, the cartridges were put in. So those are the variables. All of that information would go in our log and we would be able to work that out. Like I said, we'd be able to print, you know, an additional 50 to 60 prints of exactly the same type without really having to worry. Okay, so that's what you're doing. Um, and the key thing I have to sort of point out here is what this log and, and your record keeping will allow you to do is build confidence in what these cartridges and these inks and your refilling will actually allow you to do. Um, I think for me, with the information I gained on the last one, obviously the first thing I'd do is make sure that I topped all those cartridges up properly before I changed them in again, and I would make sure I weighed all of them properly before I put them in again. So that would help you know me dial things down even better. And the second thing is, I would probably only double my print volume. For starters, the one thing I'd do is make sure I've got a proper count of the number of prints that I'd done. Okay, instead of saying 25 to 30, which isn't very specific, I would know exactly how many prints I'd done in that, that time frame. And also when they came out, I would weigh them all individually, have that information again, and I think probably set up a spreadsheet. But that's just an example, okay? So you're effectively taking your record keeping um, and the use of your uh, set of scales to track printer usage, ink usage, and mesh the two so that you know roughly how long you've got before you you know you want to be thinking about changing out cartridges and the other thing to keep in mind is even if you decide on a very conservative um swap out point so let's say 60 prints a4 um even if that still means that you have 50 percent of the ink left in your cartridges um and that you're still doing it very early two priming routines so two cartridge swaps rather than one is still better than 10. And even if you were being even more conservative and saying, hey, 25, 30 prints suits me just fine. I'll swap my cartridges out then, thank you very much. Then three priming routines is still better than 10. Ultimately, with that extra confidence in your ability to change out cartridges and know that you can print without really having to worry about it too much, that's gonna be worth its weight in gold. Um, and it means you can use refillings. It means you can benefit from much cheaper printing um, overall. And I know that some of you are probably gonna be sitting there saying, well, why have I got a resetter? Well, the simple truth is we never really thought of this process before. We never really considered it as an option. Personally, I think something like a chip resetter is actually worth having. And not because I sell them, because my confidence in my record keeping isn't necessarily the best. Um, if you're a bit like me and a bit lackadaisical because there's too many printers lying around, that's my excuse, um, and I have kids, <laughs> my other excuse. If you're not very good at record keeping, I would imagine you'll, you will find a different process or a different way to identify when to swap your chips. Even if it's literally just a case of, well, I'll do a bulk of printing now and I'll do my 30, 40, 50 prints um, and then I'll leave it. Um, and before I do any more printing next time, I'll take the set of cartridges out and put my ready set to go in. You may prefer to just swap cartridges out before each time you do a big, you know, a fairly large batch of printing. If that works for you, great. Okay. Last thing to note, full set swap does require you to have two sets of cartridges minimum. 
You can have more sets if you want, but two sets is, is effectively the minimum. You don't want to be trying to take cartridges out of the printer, top them up, get them back into the printer, um, all in one go. With a Pro 300, it just isn't, it isn't feasible. Um, you do not have enough time to get all of those cartridges out, top them all up before the print head moves over to the right, okay? And I would never in a million years recommend that you actually take all of the cartridges out and leave the print head without cartridges sitting over those ink receivers. The ink in those receivers, when it's bare and there's no cartridge in there, will start to dry out. You will be promoting clogging, um, so it's just a no, okay? Having a second set of cartridges means that you can take your cartridges out one at a time with a new one and put it in. You'll have seen me do that, albeit in two separate tranches um, in an earlier video. But you can easily swap all of your cartridges out and put new ones in without refilling or anything like that, without the print head moving back over to the side or without potentially drying any of those ink receivers out. Okay, so that second set of cartridges is, to our mind, certainly absolutely essential. How you actually get that extra set of cartridges is up to you. But obviously the simplest way is to buy a second set of cartridges, originals, um, and then just accept the extra cost. Um, there will be some people who have empties that will be available. They might sell them, I don't know, on eBay, Gumtree, or places like that. But the bottom line is we are trying to work with recyclers and things to get more in, and we're looking for and advertising for people who are using a Pro 300 and, and not using it with, with refill inks to send us their empties, and we're, we're offering credit on that, okay? So we will hopefully have some kind of a stock of these cartridges available. Um, the other thing to note is the cartridge themselves isn't essential. As you've seen in our other videos, you'll see that we're actually using a PGI-9 cartridge. However, it is using a PFI 300 chip. So it is using the color appropriate chip. In this case, it's photo black. So that chip is a PFI 300 chip on a PGI-9 um, cartridge, okay? So the chip's the bit you need. So there you go. That is the concept of a full set swap when used with refilling and a second set of cartridges on a PFI 300. Um, as I've already pointed out, the same idea can be used with other printers where you have ink tanks and refilling. Please remember to give us a thumbs up if you found this useful or you just like the video. Um, if you want more of this kind of content, then please hit our subscribe button. And uh, beyond that, constructive criticism is always welcome. Um, we always try and improve on these videos uh, as much as we possibly can, and we're working very hard to make that happen. But what we see when we're reviewing these and editing is obviously very different from what you as an end user actually get out of it. So if you can provide us with some kind of feedback as to whether or not it's just too long or you needed more detail in a certain area or hey, did you ever think of explaining it like this? You know, all of that stuff's useful. So please do let us know, okay? Anyway, thanks very much for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.